Hey, how's everyone doing today? I hope you said great. I am. I'm getting ready to go on an adventure. Come with me. Hello, we're at a library today at one of the most influential Christian leaders of the 20th century, Billy Graham. And we're going to be able to go into the library. And this is the home that he grew up in. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina. The home was on Park Road. It was a dairy farm at the time, and they've moved the house here, brick by brick. And of course, Billy Graham had huge crusades from 1947 to 2005 in over 105 countries. And they say that during that time, There were 300, excuse me, 3 million people saved or asked the Lord to be their Savior. He's only the fourth person that wasn't a military person or politician to lie in state. And actually right here, they had his funeral in 2018. They had a large tent set up at the time. A lot of dignitaries were there. place. Okay. It's a house that was built by Billy's dad, who they called Frank, and uh, it was built in 1927, and it cost $9,000. And the family lived here from the time Billy was nine until he went to college when he was 18. It's beautiful. Now, didn't when he was here, um, I know when he that uh, he had passed away. What, did he not lie in state here in the dining room? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think Bush came through. Yeah, Who else? Several presidents. Yeah, uh -huh. it was here. It was here. It was right here. Oh, it was right here in the living room. Yeah. Okay. The casket was right here. They removed the sofa. Okay. The sofa went out. And this door, or they exited, or they came in. Okay. That's beautiful. Sorry, in the movie industry, just a fun thing to do. So this is a leather Bible and devotional book, Daily Light, and the Daily Path belonged to Morrow Coffee Graham. Yes, Morrow was Billy's dad, uh, mother. Okay, and there's a picture of his parents. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Here's the earlier one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Billy and his mother and father. Yep. Dad, Mom, Billy. And then the next one is this house on Park Road. And I think it was a dairy farm, correct? It was, a 300 acre dairy farm. Yep. They had 75, 80 head of cows that they milked twice a day. It's amazing. Yeah. I think I remember I really loved the um, kitchen was so nice. Ah. Well, there's pictures of the family. Yeah. It's Billy and, and his three family. His siblings and his mother and dad. Okay. And there are his siblings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to go? Oh. oh, it's okay. So those are some of the earlier pictures there of the wedding, their wedding on the right-hand side right here. In this kitchen? Yep. The kitchen's very close to original. All the cabinets are original and the sink is original down there. That's a true farm sink. Um, I would love to have this kitchen today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's two. Uh, electrical objects, uh, electric, electric stove with a deep well heater, and that's from about 1935. And the one over here is an icebox, it's from 35. An ice yeah. refrigerator is now, we'll call them. And uh, that was the coil that cooled things. And uh, before this, it was all ice blocks. In the end, it's, you, you walk yeah, the through. ice man. Sure. I remember the milkman. <laughs> we were lucky it lasted three days. Yeah. So here's the last family portrait. This 
this one up here, or there's a large picture of it. And they had all of this. It was taken in 1962, I think. Morrow family and Frank yep. Graham. And it was really a good thing because he died about two weeks later. Oh. So that was the last family photo they got. And they this is just the enlarged section of this one with only the kids on it. And she lived until 1981, I believe. And this must have been the dairy farm. That was the dairy farm. Sorry for the glare. Guy on the tractor and down here below is Mel, Billy's younger brother. Okay. And Billy's younger brother uh, was, he loved the earth and the farming, and so he bought a, a farm pretty close to where theirs was. And so he was a farmer. He didn't very, he was a religious person, but he didn't, uh, he wasn't involved in the ministry. But all. of the lobby. Might be a little noisy in here, so I'll try to talk over it and read what we see. There's Franklin Graham speaking. He's the CEO of Samaritan's Purse, where they give the um, shoe boxes all over the world with toys to children that never receive toys. And pretty soon we're going to see Elsie start. I think her name's Elsie. She's going to start to talk and tell us a little bit about uh, Billy Graham. Well, hello there. Didn't see you coming. My name is Bessie. I love that song because it comes right out of the book of Psalms where God said, Every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> Woohoo! Imagine that! Why, well, I bet you're surprised that I can do more than just mmm. Did you know that cows were created on the sixth day? The very same day that God created man. That makes us cows pretty special. And did you know that of all the animals that entered Noah's ark, the Bible lists cattle first. And guess what? One day, every living thing, including cows, will praise the Lord. Won't that be a miracle? You know us old milk cows, we love living at the Graham Dairy Farm. But I have to confess, when I felt Billy Frank's cold hands at milking time, 5.30 every morning, I'd swish my wet tail right across his face. <laughs> Gotta admit though, Billy Frank never got after me too much. I think every time he sat down for breakfast with a cold glass of milk, he appreciated my special gift. that would change the hearts of many. For over 60 years, Billy Graham has dedicated his life to proclaiming a timeless and consistent message of love and forgiveness through salvation in Jesus Christ. Souls are moved when the gospel is clearly presented, setting millions on a new path, a journey to eternal life. This is Cliff Barrows, and I was privileged to join the team that Billy Graham assembled in 1950 to form the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Together, we have seen God work in powerful ways to extend the reach of evangelism around the world. But God is also a God of love. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Stepped onto the world stage and with God's grace and guidance began to preach the good news of the gospel. That we love our fellow man as God loves us. Coming to prominence in the mid-20th century, Billy Graham was among the first to understand the power of the media for evangelism and harness that power to reach almost every corner of the world on radio and television with the message of salvation. We have not come to put on a show on entertainment. We believe that there are many people here tonight that have hungry hearts. You can find everything that you've been searching for in Christ. The high and powerful sought his wisdom and company. He counseled 11 U.S. presidents. Yet he took the time to kneel and pray with the war-torn and weary, with the weak and downtrodden. Billy and Ruth in their wedding picture. This is their home in Montreat, North Carolina, by the fireplace. This is a picture of Ruth's wedding dress. And they said that she also wore it for their 50th wedding anniversary. This is Billy's leather briefcase that he carried around the world for 20 years. This is the Schofield Bible that he used. This Ruth's passport. This is a picture of Billy Graham, Cliff Barrows, and George Beverly Shea, who will see their graves at the end of the tour. They were with him throughout his whole ministry. This is a picture of Billy playing golf with President Nixon and actually the scorecard that they kept. license plate. This is President George W. Bush at the inauguration 2005 prayer service in Washington National Cathedral and a handwritten letter that he received. This is him with the presidents down through the years. He's with John Kennedy. President Trump, at what age did you realize that you George Bush, a preacher? I'm going to back up so you can see all of them. There's many Johnston, Reagan, Clinton, Nixon, Eisenhower. That's him speaking in the background. It used to be a country club. Speaking on 9 11. I really do not know the answer, totally, even to my own satisfaction. I have to accept by faith that God is sovereign and He's a God of love and mercy and compassion in the midst of suffering. This is Billy and gang members in East Harlem, and below it are actually two guns turned in by convicted gang members during a 16 week crusade in New York City in 1957. There's just some of the memorabilia in here. This, this typewriter was given him when he was visiting Russia. This watch was given to him by Saddam Hussein. Apparently he was done, I don't know if you all remember, Ralph Edwards did the show, This Is Your Life. And apparently Billy Graham was on there in 1957. 
This is Billy's preaching Bible. Now here's an album cover by George Beverly Shea, who was with Billy the entire time. And we're going to see his grave at the end, but, but he died in 2013 and 104 years old. And, it's, and it is said that he has sang in front of more people than any other human has, that he has sang for 200 million people in, per, in person, that he's won two Grammys. He was just an incredible singer, and, and Billy said that he didn't ever want to preach, that Beverly didn't first get up and sing. This is one of my favorite rooms. This is the Presidential Medal of Freedom given to Billy Graham by Ronald Reagan. This is 1983. And this is the suit that he wore to accept that award. And this is Reagan giving him, giving him that award. These are cufflinks given to him and a lapel pin by President Ford. Just more awards. Billy Graham and President Johnson and Grady Wilson. This is a telegram that he had sent to John F. Kennedy congratulating him on the birth of his son John. Little did we know what would happen in the future pocket watch he received from Reagan following the Ronald Reagan Freedom Award which he, which he received just right here in 2000. And this is the George Bush Excellence in Service Award given to Billy Graham in 2006. So as you can see, he just really had a lot of affiliation with the presidents. This was a pin given him by President Bush. Last film before we go. Must be them setting up the Crusades. Look at this beautiful cross we're walking into as we walk out. And this is Billy Graham's desk from his Minneapolis office and a leather chair from his Montreat office up in the mountains of North Carolina where he lived till he died. This is the bookshop. It's called Ruth's Bookshop if you want to come through when you finish. And they have all kinds of different books, crosses. Beautiful place. to shop and stop and show you this. This is the Charlotte Coliseum, 1972. Uh, Billy Graham, wrestling, Elvis Presley, and ice hockey. I know Elvis actually died in 1977, the year I graduated high school. But I've been in the Charlotte Coliseum many times. It actually still stands.
There's a picture of Billy Graham laying in state or lying in state at the Washington Capitol Rotunda. Like I said, he's only one of four people that civilians that have ever gotten to do that. This is his funeral. President Trump speaks. Hey guys, we're walking down to George Beverly Shea and Cliff Barrow's resting place. I apologize, there's a leaf blower. Hey, um, someone blowing leaves over there. So I hope you can hear me. The last time I was here, George and Cliff were not here, neither was Billy Graham, just Ruth, and they have all since passed. It's a beautiful, beautiful sight. Hopefully the sun we're going to be able to see. So here they are. I'm going to try to zoom in for you. And here is Cliff Burton Barrows, born April 6, 1923, died November 15, 2016. And then his wife, who had died in 1994, is beside him. And then there is George Beverly Shea, um, said that he was born actually in 1909 and died April 10, 2013. So Bev died first. Cliff died in 2016 and Billy died in 2018. I wanted to read Cliff's epitaph. It says, as the music director and master of ceremonies for the Billy Graham Crusades, Cliff Barrows led choir and congregational singing at meetings on every inhabitable continent of the world. His heart's cry was to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. There's no greater joy than encouraging people to sing. He once said, every great moving of the Spirit of God has been accomplished by singing. I believe it will always be so. Here's George Beverly Shea. It says, as musical mainstay in the Billy Graham Crusades, George Beverly Shea carried the gospel of Jesus Christ in song to every corner of the globe. He composed many songs, performing hundreds of concerts, and recorded more than 70 albums. But a poem by Ray Miller captured the thrill of his heart. I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name. And there is a story that Bill Gaither tells that uh, he was visiting Bev in, up in the mountains of Montreat where he lived. Billy lived there as well. And George and Bill Gaither were driving down the mountain and George was at the wheel. And he said, and George was in his 90s at the time and he was flying. And Bill said, George, I want to get to heaven, but not today. And guys, this is Ruth's grave. I don't know if you can see it said that she was uh, born in June 10th, 1920, died June 14th, 2007. And if you know at the bottom, it says, end of construction. Thank you for your patience that she and Billy were driving on a construction site one time through it. She saw that on the side of the road and she said, you know, I have to have that for my epitaph. And she did. And then over here's Billy. Hope you can see it said that he was born November 7th, that's the day before my birthday or day after, 1918 and died February 21st, 2018. Preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, praise God. Said that he was born and raised on a dairy farm just minutes, a few minutes uh, from here. And he preached the gospel message to millions of people around the world in person through radio, television, film, books, and internet. When asked how he wanted to be remembered, he replied simply as his grace stone states, a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He once said that someday you'll read or hear that Billy Graham is dead. Don't you believe a word of it? 
I shall be more alive than I am now. I will be gone into the presence of God. And we all have that opportunity to do that. And I was just talking to one of the assistants here saying that at 5 o'clock every night, they're closed on Sunday, but they're open five days a week. They're going to have carriage rides, live nativity, and much more. So you guys, it looks like they're going to have live animals. Should be a lot of fun. I had the privilege one time of meeting Billy's oldest daughter, Gigi, and she was telling us that when she was 14, that she had uh, was in Europe with her family. They were on a crusade, and that she had met a man who was 21 years old. His name was Steve Churchigan, and um, she didn't really think anything about it. They came back to the United States, and three years later, he wrote a letter to her asking her to marry him. And she said that her parents had always said, you know, you need to be in prayer for the person that you're going to marry. And she thought, you know, this, this could be it. And she said that her parents did not force her to marry him, but they told her that is what she needed to do, and she did. She moved to Switzerland and moved in with him and his family. And she said that uh, his father was very controlling, and it was very difficult. She said, I could tell that um, they were talking bad about me. Uh, I didn't know what they were saying, but I could tell. She said, I stayed as long as I could, but I, I fled back to the United States. And um, he later followed. And they remained married for a while and divorced later. She said that her, her oldest son had gotten into drugs, had gone to prison. And the reason she was saying all of this is just to say, you know, you look at other people's lives especially people with notoriety and you think their lives are perfect but they're not none of us have perfect lives and that praise God for the Lord that he is always with us and that we can seek him have comfort in him and that all things work out for good that for those that love the Lord and I admired her for being so candid and open about her life um, you know you would think the daughter Billy Graham Everything would go perfectly, but it just doesn't for any of us, especially with what, you know, everybody's going through right now that, uh, you know, the Lord is, the Lord has this and everything is going to be just fine. Now, this is the parking lot and they had Billy's funeral here. They'd set up a large tent. It was invitation only. I know there were over a thousand people here. Um, dignitaries, President, I think uh, President Trump was here. But also several years ago, they uh, Franklin said he wanted to have a tent revival. So they set up another huge tent and they uh, had the Gaither Vocal Band, the Martins, the Booth Brothers, the Oak Ridge Boys, many others. And George and Beverly were alive at the time, and they were on stage, and Bill was interviewing them. They'd sang a little duet, and uh, Cliff shared that he told Billy Graham that, you know, when we go to heaven, George and I are still going to have a job, but you're going to be out of a job. And Billy said, well, I'm going to be singing with you. And Cliff said, it'll take heaven to do that precious men so I hope you'll visit sometime there is where they're gonna have the carriage rides you can see the carriage over there in the distance but there is no admission to come it's a wonderful place and guys I hope to see you again soon we've got another great trip coming up I hope you'll join me so have a great day and God bless you